where do we go from here? Defense attorneys for Brian Koberger, arguing a recent survey they ordered of local residents, shows he can't get a fair trial and needs a change of venue. 81% of those who had heard about the stalking took a position that Mr. Koberger is guilty. These are deeply held opinions in this community within this jury pool. This after prosecutors previously objected to the survey, arguing it violates a gag order in the case. Have you read, seen or heard if Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? The expert who crafted the survey, taking the stand to defend his work, with questions by the prosecution quickly turning contentious. That um, Mr. Koberger allegedly stalked one of the victims. That's false. You know that to be false. I did. Yes. And being told that I am tainting the jury pool. I'm angry. Please go ahead and be as angry as you like as you continue to do your work for the defense in this case. It's been more than a year since Brian Koberger was arrested and charged with murdering college students Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin in an off-campus home near the University of Idaho. A judge entered a not guilty plea on Koberger's behalf. Now as the legal maneuverings over the change of venue question play out. That's right, we may never get to try. The victim's families left waiting for their day in court. Kaylee Gonzalez's parents, Steve and Christy, voicing their frustration on the YouTube channel, The Interview Room, earlier this week. They, use, they drag their feet on certain things, and then other things they just go at a speed that nobody really understands. And a lawyer for the Gonzalez family says their frustrations are growing. It's one thing to have a delay every once in a while, but uh, they feel frustrated that it seems like every hearing or every motion, there's continued delays. Again, no trial date has been set, and the hearing to discuss moving proceedings out of Latah County have now been pushed back to the end of June. The judge has also not yet decided whether the defense will be allowed to continue with that controversial survey. Guys, another important date to keep an eye on, April 17th, next week. That's the deadline for Koberger's legal team to submit information about his alibi on the night of the murders. Guys. All right, Kaylee, thank you. And we're joined now by NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalos. Danny, good morning. So what did you make of these arguments yesterday? So like many people, a couple days ago, I, it sounded to me like the defense was out there just willy-nilly calling people on the sly without telling the court, without telling the prosecutor. And I pictured an intern in the back office saying, um, you know, he's innocent and stuff, right? <laughs> and that's the kind of question that I think everybody would have a problem with. But the state, the prosecution came in and said in court, look, we're okay with a survey. We just don't like the questions that were asked. And I think they kind of painted themselves into a corner, and here's why. Because immediately after that, an expert came on the stand and explained how every word in every question is backed by science and research and studies to be something that elicits whether or not there's bias. And by the way, the issue came up of whether or not, hey, they included questions in there that were false. Facts yeah, to that me, that's true. they're seeding the jury pool with false information and then going, oh, we can't get a fair trial here. By the way, I get it. I think that's a fair point. But the expert explained that, look, we had to include things that were not true because we're not testing whether or not people are aware of facts. We're actually testing the opposite. We're testing whether or oh, not pervasive media coverage has tainted people, mm. whether it's true or false. In fact, it may be more important to test whether or not the false facts out there are known by potential jurors. Did you find his reasons compelling, the expert who testified? I did, but here's the thing, and this is why all these cases, I know you know this, Savannah, oftentimes they come down to a battle of the experts. And if this was a battle of the experts, then the state, the prosecution, came to the battle completely unarmed. So what you had was unrebutted testimony by an expert who was clearly very good at testifying, who explained many different ways how the science, the research, everything backs up these questions. And these questions are not just ad hoc made up in the moment. They are carefully crafted. For example, a question like, what have you heard about the trial? They show through science, elicits, most people don't know a whole lot, but if you ask them questions like, have you heard that Brian Koberger may have stalked one of the victims. People say, oh, yeah. Even though that's I not true. I do remember that. And that's one of the questions that came up yesterday, the specific question that was not true. And that's why it was one of the most controversial questions yeah. yesterday, because it is testing not whether it's true or false, but whether media coverage has gotten into the minds of people. I would say jurors. counterpoint. It's testing it, but it's also putting out, actually Agreed. putting out the information. Mm -hmm. And you can't unring the bell. But, Absolutely. I mean, even if they get this change of venue, it just moves somewhere else in Idaho. In Idaho, where where everybody has heard Knows. about this case anyway. So then, good yeah, discussion. another survey in that jurisdiction, I mean...
Where does it end, Danny? Where does it end? Where does it end? Thank nice you so much. Appreciate All right. it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.